North uh, eastern China, there is a river which is called uh, Songhua, and it has about 2,000 kilometers of length. And uh, it's uh, in the ancient days, 18th century, it was known for a stone which you can see here, which is very characteristic, uh, which was called Songhua Jade. It's these beautiful striations you can see here, and which was very popular for ink stones and other items from the scholars table. And our example we have here is an imperial one uh, from the Qianlong dynasty from the 18th century, which is why it has this uh, four character Qianlong mark here. And it has it still retains its uh, matching box here, which is carved with uh, cranes uh, below a Gnerli uh, pine tree and some rocks. You can see it's, it's pretty deep. You can see that from the shades. Um, it's pretty high relief with some, some real undercutting here also. This was so popular that um, it was copied uh, even in the Republic uh, era, in the early 20th century, about 100 years ago. But uh, although the artists that did those copies were extremely skilled, uh, you can see there are lots of, of differences. You will see, for instance, that here the feathers at the top of the crane's heads, so they are missing in the copy. They just left them out because they are too difficult to carve. Compared to the other examples that we know, uh, we have noted two from the Bloch collection were sold uh, at Sotheby's a couple of years ago uh, in 2005, and they sold for 360,000 euros and 520,000 euros, or two respectively 3 million Hong Kong dollars. And then there's another one, um, maybe mark in period, maybe a bit later, which was sold uh, by Christie's um, in uh, 2017, which looks very similar, but again, not sure if this is a period piece because the stone doesn't have these amazing striations as we can see here, so beautiful. This one, by the way, comes from uh, Walter Sedgwick. And it's a funny story because um, Walter Sedgwick was actually Mrs. Walter Sedgwick. So she was quite a well-known figure in the British, in the United Kingdom collectors uh, group of high-end Chinese art. And this one bears the collector's number 307 from this collection. Um, given the quality of this piece, it seems very clear that it has to come from, from very, very strong provenance.